Deus. Secret number 10, Kingdom Seed Sowing. Kingdom Seed Sowing is the process by which an individual takes from his financial and material resources and plants it in an institution established and run for the purpose of soul saving. In this case, the individual is you and the institution is the church, the celestial church of Christ. The parish in which you worship is the institution in which you should sow your financial and material resources. Whatever you sow into the church will not physically be transferred to heaven for God to use. In fact, God does not personally need it, but God needs it indirectly for three broad reasons. One, for the development and progress of the church. The church needs money to meet daily maintenance expenses, that's the current expenditure and to execute developmental projects, capital expenditure. Two, to provide comfort for full-time church workers. And lastly, to make donations to charitable organizations and provide for the needy. This is why it is generally said that money is the vehicle of evangelism. Without money, adequate money, the activities of the church will be grounded. In the years past, parishes were run as commonwealth. In the same spirit that the apostles and disciples behaved at the formative stage of Christianity, Acts chapter 4, 12 to 37. At that time, parish development was rapid and God responded by pouring rays of blessings on members. Celestials were not many in the unemployment market. On the job promotion was rapid and business breakthroughs were common occurrences. Then, the usual impression of non-members was that Celestial Church had a diabolical means by which it prospered its members. Unknown to them, God was only responding in a positive way to the positive dispositions of his children. Yes, there is a secret code that God of Celestia employs to bless and elevate his children. You reap multiples of what you sow provided you sow adequately. Adequacy might not necessarily mean the volume of what you sow, but also the disposition of your heart and the timing of your sowing. God has the greatest accountancy outfit and he is the greatest rewarder. One of our hymns says, Ma she shelo, ma she wa isi ni, ma furumi, Oluwa la <laughs> The verses end with the words that establish the fact that the eye of God is censoring your work and that angels are recording them accordingly. God is doing this to make sure he rewards you according to what you sow. God does not take account of your activities, including your financial contributions, in order to punish you. Not at all. Rather, it takes account to enable him give you reward that will be commensurate with what you sow. 
even when you do not have money to donate or contribute, and you invest your labor in the work of the church, God will not fail to take account of your labor, and He will reward you in due season. The channels that are open to you, through which you can sow your monetary seed in Celestial Church of Christ, are General Purpose Collection, Travel Fund, Money for Lighting, Collection for Charity, Building Fund, either for new projects or maintenance of church premises, Evangelism Fund, Annual Harvest, Juvenile and Adult, Titan, the payment of 10% of your periodic increase, and lastly, Offerings, Spiritual Directive on Collections. For Annual Harvest, an amount of money is usually levied that few secretaries usually go around to collect. There is a special box for tithe. Individuals bring their offerings by singing and dancing from the church entrance. Apart from these three, the Holy Spirit through Prophet Mawio prescribed that all collections in Celestial Church of Christ be collected using a metal ranged pouch called Pajasper. This is stated in section 82 of the church constitution. At the time of collection, a candle should be lit on the Pajasper. This spiritual injunction is no longer observed in majority of our parishes worldwide. Instead, they use fanciful trees and so on. There is urgent need to make amends so that member seeds can germinate, grow, and produce fruits according to the covenant of blessing that God made with the church. Satanic blessing versus divine blessing. Sowing your seed in the kingdom of God is the sure way to enter into the river of riches without any repercussion. The Bible states in Proverbs 10.22, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he added no sorrow with it. The blessings that man rushes to get from Satan through special sacrifices are loans with severe charges. Usually, the terms appear bearable at first, but when it comes to servicing the loan by payment of periodical interest and repayment of capital, the borrower finds that he has entered into a ditch. The periodical interest may include the lives of wife, husband, children, and relations, and or physical health and or other life portions. It is an exchange. The capital repayment is definitely the subjection of the soul of the patron into eternal torment in hell. Luke 16, 19-25 and Revelation 18, 9-20. Unfortunately, it is difficult to turn back at this time. Satan cannot be a giver like God. The reason is because he has very limited resources and he must keep on servicing the needs of his multitudes of followers from the limited resources. So he learns to warn now, takes it back with interest and learns to another. But when God gives, he gives without asking for capital repayment or interest. God has abundant and limitless resources and his riches are enduring. All that God requires is eternal devotion to Him and love for neighbors. With God, you have no special price to pay. Because this book is not about preaching, but about revealing secrets to you, let us discuss two major financial and or material investments that are highly effective for achieving success in the Celestial Church of Christ. Tithing Tithe belongs to God, and every child of God must obey the law of tithe. Tithe began as a voluntary donation by Abraham to a priest, Melchizedek, out of spoils of war. Genesis 14, 15-24. Check verse 20 specifically. The spirit of appreciation towards God for winning the war must have motivated Abraham to pay the tithe because there was no law on tithe then. God responded by blessing Abraham, new name given, beyond his imagination. When God chose the Israelites as his possession, he gave them law on Mount Sinai, and he made the law of tithe an integral part of the law. He first claimed it to himself, Leviticus 27.30. Later, after putting the Levites in charge of the tabernacle and commanding them not to have inheritance of land, he willed the tithe to them for their upkeep, Numbers 18.23-24. 
as the spiritual relationship proceeded, God made tithe part of the commonwealth policy for his children for certain reasons beyond the scope of this book. A payer of tithe could, as from that time, enjoy part of it with Levites and the needy in the presence of the Lord. Deuteronomy 12, 5 to 7, and Deuteronomy 14, 22 to 23. This commonwealth policy is what God reiterated in Malachi 3.10, saying, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. The storehouse, of course, will be the church barn, where the church keeps food. If we combine the fact that the tithe should be brought to the church, and that the payer could also partake in it, a commonwealth system should be the aim and objective of God. This is a common wealth that requires those who work to bring at least 10% of their gain to the church so that the Levites, the needy, and even those who bring it can eat together. What I'm trying to explain here is that when tithes are paid, it is not right for Levites to smile to the bank while many members, including widows and orphans, are languishing in abject poverty. That negates the common wealth system that God had used his own portion the tithe to establish. You will appreciate this point by brooding on the financial system adopted by the apostles at the beginning. Acts 2, 44 to 47, Acts 4, 32 to 36, and Acts 6, 1 to 7. A financial administration that provides food for the needy out of the tithes paid by members is necessary to make the church grow in one love without putting additional pressure from the needy on those who have paid their tithes and brought their offerings. Is tithe the most important spiritual requirement? This is a very good question. A point that must be cleared at this juncture is the overemphasis on tithes that characterizes most of our parishes. As it is in Celestial Church, so it is in many other churches. I'm not sure we can hear any sermon these days without a stress on the payment of tithes. It is important to remind our people of what God demands from them. But when an issue is overstressed, it soon loses its tissue and substance. It is like when you overwash a cloth. It is either that the cloth will fade or it will tear. The overstressing has created a negative psyche on worshippers as if the law of tithe was a creation of shepherds rather than God. Those who ordinarily should pay have come to believe that they are paying to man instead of God. The trumpeting of tithe should abate so that children of God will be allowed to see tight in his true picture as God's Jews from every one of his children. Jewish scribes were accused by Jesus of their overstressing of tight in expense of more important spiritual requirements such as judgment, mercy, and faith. Matthew 23, 23. I went into all of the above discussion because I see that it is within the scope of this book to clear all the impediments that discourage or disenable most celestials from paying their tithes correctly as and when due. I must point out here that celestials of old were very honest in their tithing, and because of that, they were richly blessed. I enjoy you to pay your tithe correctly from today. It is an important combination in the master key to riches, why you must pay. It is like you are not yet convinced as to why you should pay your tithe correctly and timely. One or two words may be necessary here to let you condition your mind towards God as to why He is entitled to part of your income. You are constantly in a joint venture with God, or what I would simply call business partnership. Your life and all the resources you employ to generate income are gifts from God. 
They are God's own investment in you, your divine talents. The wisdom to apply your talents in a profitable manner and the opportunities that open to you are God's making. On this basis, you must see and acknowledge God as the senior but silent partner in your life endeavors. For all these, God demands for just 10% of your increase. Is he not entitled to it? He definitely is entitled to it. If you deny him his pay, he can go on strike. Just like an unpaid employee will go on strike. Do you want God to go on strike from your economic endeavors? I believe not. God has gone on strike from the businesses of many celestials. They are busy working like elephants and eating like rats. A secret I have tested and found to be highly efficacious is that the only way to retain the superior input of God in worst economic activities is to pay Him His 10% as at when due and pay Him accurately. You are not making money because you are wiser than others. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, in part, Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is He that giveth thee power to make wealth. Ecclesiastes 5, 19 also says, Every man also to whom God had given riches and wealth, and had given him power to eat thereof, and to take his portion, and to rejoice in his labor, this is the gift of God. Knowing, accepting, and rewarding God as the senior partner in your life businesses, including your economic activities, is the greatest secret that you need to know. It is the soul of success, not only in the celestial church of Christ, but also in the entire Christendom. All other secrets revealed in this book are tissues. Tight is the soul. Now that you know, the choice is yours to either begin to attract your riches and rebuild your wealth or to continue in your comradeship with poverty. If you are already wealthy, keep practicing this secret in order to maintain what you have and continue increasing it. Once again, let me remind you that celestials of old were faithful in the payment of tithes. Most of them put all their resources at the disposal of the church. In return, God showered His abundant blessings on them. People who noticed the tremendous financial transformation in their lives saw something supernatural in the church. That is the origin of the saying, to see glory, you must reach Selah. Leadership by example. Shepherds are also required to pay tithe on their increase. This is in line with the instruction to Levites, Numbers 18, 25-28. One of the roles of a leader is to motivate his followers to do the right thing. A shepherd is the parish leader. One thing I have observed is that in parishes where shepherds pay tithe, the members also are encouraged to pay theirs. So, one of the effective ways to motivate members is to move in an orderly manner with the shepherd leading while other elders follow and then the entire congregation in the order of seniority. Timing of tithe collection Originally, tithes were collected once in a month, usually the last Sunday of the month. With time, it was collected twice in the month, first Sunday and last Sunday, in order to provide opportunity for both late and early salary earners respectively. This is understandable. These days, many parishes collect tithes every Sunday. The excuse is that they need to provide opportunities for those who earn income on daily basis, who might not want to keep the tithe till the end of the month for fear of spending it. Good as it seems, the practice, however, has succeeded in undermining the sacredness of tithing. The psychology of members has been tuned to make them put tight on the same pedestal as other collections. This explains why members now put ridiculous amounts such as 5 naira, 10 naira in tight envelopes. There is the need to return to the twice in a month schedule in order to restore the sacredness of this all-important financial responsibility of members towards God. Where to pay tight. Where you pay your tithe is very crucial to enable you to enjoy the blessings that God covenanted to bestow 
on payers of tithe. God said you should pay your tithe and bring your offerings only at the place he has chosen to put his name. This means that it is not just anywhere that you can pay your tithe if you really desire to receive the covenanted blessing that is expected to follow. You must pay to the parish where you worship God. Deuteronomy 12, 5-7 Deuteronomy 14, 23 Though every church claims divine establishment, their fruits will prove what they really are. And now that there is factionalism and intra-parish squabbles in Celestial Church of Christ, it is not all parishes that qualify to receive your tithes and offerings. A parish with any of the following characteristics does not qualify to receive your tithe. A parish that is torn apart by quarrels, 1 Corinthians 14.3, James 3.16, God cannot dwell in the midst of confusion, rather he will praise where there is love and unity. A parish that has lost its link with the origin of celestial church of Christ. A parish that is headed by a shepherd who is linked with the occult. A parish that does not make provision for the needy among the congregation, widows and orphans. A parish that does not make the required monthly returns to the central body of celestial church. This practice brings cause on parishes. The infighting that is tearing celestials apart is undoubtedly depriving innocent worshippers of the fruits of their tithes and offerings because most of the prices where they pay their tithes have been cut off from the vine. A branch that is separated from the vine cannot bear fruit but shall wither. For a parish to wither, it is the members that will first wither. So ensure that you pay your tithes at and bring your offerings to a parish you are sure is on the side of God. The amount to pay as tithe. The Bible established 10% of increase as the amount to be paid as tithe. Deuteronomy 14.22 The only controversial area is what constitutes the increase on which the 10% should be calculated. The view of Levites being the beneficiaries is at variance with members who are to pay the tithe. While one school, comprising mostly of Levites, teaches 10% of gross increase, the other school, comprising mainly of members, teaches 10% of net increase. Examples will show the difference in the interpretation of both schools of thought. Example 1. A farmer. Let us say at the beginning of the season, a farmer has 10 bags of gari, 10 bags of maize, 500 standard tubers of yam, and 50,000 naira cash. He planted 5 bags of maize. 5,000 naira was used to buy cassava stems that he planted, and 7,000 naira to buy yam stalks. He hired laborers with 20,000 naira and consumed the rest within the season with cash balance of only 2,000 naira. Let us say that at the end of the season, the farmer has 25 bags of gari, 30 bags of maize, 2,000 tubers of yam. Let us convert all to money as below. At the beginning, gari 10 bags at 2,500 minus 2,500. End of season, 25 bags at 2,500 is 62,500 naira. Maize, 10 bags at 4,000 is 40,000. 30 bags at 4,000 is 120,000 naira. Yam, 500 bags, 500 tubers at 300 is 150,000 naira. 2,000 at end at 300 is 600,000 naira. Cash in hand at beginning 50,000, at the end 2,000. Total at beginning 265,000 naira. At the end, 784,500 naira. The net increase in this case is 784,500 
minus 265,000 naira, which is 519,500. The tithe in this case shall be 519,500 divided by 10, which is 51,950 naira. However, the school that preaches gross increase will only allow for expenses that are direct to the source of the income. Thus, Gary's terms, 5,000, maize, 5 bags at 4,000, 20,000, yam stubs, 7,000, hired labor, 20,000, total invested, 52,000 naira. The increase is 784,500 naira minus 52,000 naira, which is equal to 732,500 naira. The tithe on these will come to 10% of 732,500 naira, that equals to 73,250 naira. Example 2. Salary earner. The difference in the two schools of thought becomes more pronounced when we consider the case of employees that are salary earners, the category into which many members fall. Let us assume that an employee who works for XYZ Company Limited has 25,000 naira in his savings account, 8,000 naira cash in hand to meet daily expenses for the month, spends 2,500 on food, 2,000 on transport, and rent paid 1,500 naira, donation to church and charity 1,000 naira, miscellaneous expenses 800 naira, balance at end of month 200 naira, salary received 25,000 naira, school of net increase competition, salary received 25,000 naira, Less allowable outgoings, feeding expenses 2,500, transport expenses 2,000 naira, accommodation expenses 1,500 naira, church security donation 1,000 naira, tight table increase will now become 18,000, tight table will be 1,800. While school of gross increase competition will say salary received 25,000 naira, so tight table is just 10% of 25,000, which is 2,500 naira. In a nutshell, the principle underlying the interpretation of the net increase school of thought is that all expenses on the basic necessities that will keep the individual and his family going, such as food, transport to place of work, house rent, donation to church and charity are expenses that should be taken off from gross income before arriving at titable income. The gross increase school of thought says that all the individual's expenses should be borne out of the 90% that remains in his pocket after taking out gross own 10%. Let us notice, however, that the net increase school does not teach that donations to church and charity should be deducted from the tight table. It is only an allowable deduction before arriving at the tightable income. Whichever school of thought you agree with, the important thing is clear definition of what you adopt and your consistency. If you go into the complex analysis of the two schools of thought vis-à-vis -vis God's policy declaration in Genesis 3.19, in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread. It will not be out of the way if the computation of the net increase school of thought is adopted. The above computations are included just as a simple guide. Titan is a wide subject. Every celestial, like all other faithful Christians, must learn how to keep good records that will make accurate calculation of periodic increase in resources possible. Without this, you may be underpaying. This is robbing God of his own deeds. Malachi 3, 8 to 12. It is better to pay more than to pay less. However, we must not forget that the blood of Jesus has simplified and streamlined the law to make it easy for us to know and do the will of God. For the purpose of this book, the important thing is that you must know that the central secret for assessing the enduring blessings in the celestial church way is the payment of your tithes correctly, timely, and at a place acceptable to God, a place in which God has put his holy name and has not vacated. Offering. Offering is anything you give to God. It is a free will gift outside what God has laid down for you to set aside for Him. By this definition, your tithe is not an offering. Offering in Celestial Church of Christ can be divided into two broad categories, appreciation offering and motivational offering. Appreciation offering. Traditionally, offering is what you give to God in appreciation of any particular good it does for you. 
you might have passed your examination with good grace. It could be a successful wedding ceremony or safe delivery of baby. It could be promotion on your employment. You might have returned safely from a long journey. Maybe you survived a consuming calamity. You might have completed a project, e.g. building. It could even be the gift of life and good health. Reasons are bound why man should always say thank you to God, the giver, sustainer, and nourisher of life. Your offering could even be a fulfillment of a vow you had made in order to make God meet a particular need in your life, and God has met that need. This is what I call appreciation offering. Celestial Church of Christ is one church that provides unique opportunity to every member to carry its items of offering and dance from the entrance to where the shepherds and or elders stand to receive the offering. This satisfies God's requirement as revealed through David in Psalm 100, 1 to end. By the design of Celestial Church building, where the offering is handed over to the elders is the center of the cross. The heart of Jesus was at the center of the cross when he was nailed. By receiving the offering at this point, the offering knocks directly on the heart of mercy of Jesus Christ, who in response immediately showers blessings on the offerer using the elders as his vessel and mouthpiece. Celestials bring their offerings with music and dancing in an atmosphere of love. People bear witness to your offering and join you in thanking God. In essence, every offering made in Celestial Church is presented in the way God wants. And when one offers thanks in this manner, the heavens cannot do anything short of opening doors for greater miracles so that greater offerings will be made. Motivational Offering Beyond this appreciation offering, there is a secret in offering that celestials of old use to make things happen. It is the use of offering to pass their demands to God, that is, the use to clothe their demands with offering. How does one do this? When you have a pressing need, a specific need for that matter, buy an item that you know will be useful for the church. You can even buy an item that you can spiritually link to your need. For example, if you need attention in your place of work and you do not want to be suppressed, buy service there. Or if your need is happiness, buy an item that the church choir can use. You may want people to extend unalloyed love towards you, buy perfume, incense and honey. Pray with the items using one or three or seven candlesticks telling God what your need is. You can back it with a vow also. Fasting is an added advantage, but not compulsory. Use the items to offer thanks in the church. By doing this, you are demonstrating high-level faith to God that you believe your prayer is already answered. Such offering does not go unnoticed or unacted upon by God. This kind of offering is what I would call motivational offering. It is very pleasing to God. It has worked for me many times and I still use it effectively today. Many members are justified to using motivational offering effectively. If it has worked for others, why will it not work for you? This is a time-tested approach. When you offer thanks to God for what you are still expecting, you are telling God He has already done it. Tell me what greater faith God needs in order to move. The origin of this type of faith is found in Luke 7, 9 and Hebrew 11, 1 and 2. Thank you.